Let's do a classic problem in physical chemistry. Okay, this is a classic problem. And we are going to estimate the size of a water molecule. All right, this is our job. Okay, so a water molecule kind of looks like this. You know, two hydrogens and an oxygen, but for our purpose we have to approximate this as just a sphere. Okay. And the spheres are packed together in boxes. You know, in physics problems you have to know know when know when to hold them, you know. Know, know when to make assumptions and simplifications. It's like playing poker simplifications. You have to know when to do this. Okay, So we're going to make this simplification from complicated thing to simple um, spheres packed in boxes like so. And let's look at one of these spheres packed in a box like this. Now obviously if you think about it this diameter of the sphere is exactly the the same as the uh, side of this box. So we're going to try to calculate this D from primary data and the data we're going to need is rho, the density of water. Okay, density of water, then we need MH2O which is the molar mass of water. Okay, and we're going to need Avogadro's number. Oh, yeah, <laughs> hang on a sec. Avogadro, Avogadro's number. Yeah. Okay. So we need this now. One more quantity which we're going to build from the other ones is VH two O. This is the molar volume. So this is the amount of volume of one mole of water. Molar volume. Let us study now the dimensions and units of these things. Density has dimension um, L cubed, well, mass, sorry, dimension mass over volume. That's mass over L cubed, length cubed. And MKS units are kilograms per meter cubed. Now, molecular mass of H2O or any molecular mass has dimensions mass over substance and that's kilograms per kilomole in MKS units. Avogadro's number, the magic Avogadro's number, is particles per kilomole but particles really has dimension one, dimensionless. Okay, and the, sorry, sorry, sorry. I should be more, uh, seek, logically consistent. Particles per substance. Okay, how many particles per substance of, of water? Okay, and in metric units, that's one over kilomoles. Okay, so those are my dimensions in units. Finally, volume, molar volume, that's molar volume. Volume divided by substance. And that's meters cubed per kilomole. We'll need all these quantities to do the job. So let's start with simple relationship. Volume times density, uh, sorry, volume times density is mass. Okay? We start with something really simple like this. Now, if I divide both sides now by moles, kilomole, one kilomole and here one kilomole. Alright. Now I get density times molar volume is molar mass. You can check the um, you can check the dimensions of these things. Let's check the dimension here. This is mass per volume times volume per substance and that this thing is mass per substance and that's correct okay so 
molar volume is molar mass divided by density. So this is going to tell me how much volume one mole takes up. Okay. And in the case of water, this is 18 kilogram per kilomole. All right, the molar mass of water is 18 kilogram per kilomole. All right. And the density of water is 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed. Never forget that. The 10 cubed kilogram per meter cubed. If I work out all the units, this goes on top, and I get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 meter cubed per kilomole. So one kilomole of water takes up this volume. In other words, 18 kilograms of water takes up this volume. Okay. All right, we're almost there. Now, let's look at one kilomole. One kilomole of water is going to take up a certain volume. But we know how many atoms are or molecules are in one kilomole. 6.022 times 10 to the 26 particles per kilomole. So I know exactly how many water molecules, well not exactly, but I sort of know how many water molecules are in there. So if I divide this volume up, then this is going to be the volume taken up by one of my water molecules. Okay, now I'm getting close. All right, let's try that. Let's do VH2O, okay, divided by Na. What are the dimensions of these things? Let's calculate the dimensions of this first. This is volume per substance and this is one over substance. If I work out the dimensions of all of this, what happens? I get volume. And this is going to be the volume of one of my molecules, an H2O molecule. Alright, so it's 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 meters cubed per kilomole divided by Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 26, 1 over kilomole. Very good. We're almost there. When I do this division, I end up with... I end up with... When I do this division, I end up with 2 point... 989. 2.989 times 10 to the minus 29 meters cubed. Very tiny, tiny, tiny volume, and my atom is in there. My molecule is in there. Okay, great, great. I have this volume. I have this volume. However, I don't want that. I want the diameter of my water molecule, so I have to cube root the volume. Okay, so D is actually the cube root of the volume of the molecule. And if you use your calculator, you end up with 3.1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. You cube root this thing, you get 3.1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. In other words, 3.1 angstroms. Amazing, amazing. We use these macro quantities, this, 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 these are macro quantities that are used in chemistry. I mean, one mole is a lot. It's 18 kilos of water. Okay, and we join them together using this Avogadro's number, Avogadro's number, and Avogadro's number joins the macro world, the macro world to the micro world of atoms. So you start off with kilograms and moles and kilomoles and stuff like that and, and density and things like that and you join the macro world to the micro world by Avogadro's number and you get molecules and atoms. And see, we are able to take these macro quantities, this and this, and figure out a micro quantity, diameter, of one water molecule. Okay, amazing.
Amazing. A classic problem. I think we're probably not far from the true, the true value. You can try looking up the true value, and it's probably very close.